Springs finally break the spell and knock off the Irish. We'll see Schembechler Hall's coming out party. And we have the opportunity to talk about a week off. All that and more coming up next is brought to you by General Motors. A Michigan replay exclusive inside the locker room for the first time in five years. We can say Michigan beat Notre Dame. It was 24-14, and there may not be a happier coach in the country than you right now, Gary Muller. No, I feel very good, Jim, obviously, and uh, I like the way you say that. That sounds good, and we hope we can keep this going. Maybe we can make it four in a row our way, but we don't want to get too carried away with this. I worry about where treating this like a big win over Ohio State at the end of the year. You know, we've only played two games, and so we got a long way to go. Yeah, but there was emphasis on Notre Dame. Oh, there's no question about that. We wanted to beat Notre Dame. There, I would tell you nothing but the truth. And, and next week, uh, Florida State's a big game, too. But uh, I want to go to the Rose Bowl. That's our whole focus, and that's what our kids want to do. And Notre Dame didn't help us get to the Rose Bowl. It makes us feel better about ourselves. Out Michigan versus Notre Dame and a new grass surface, and you get the big turnover early again. This is the way to start it. Uh, they throw high, and Lance Dott and, uh, gets another interception. He had two at Boston. One was nullified on the penalty, and he's doing a good, good job back there. Second play of the game, the interception. You take over, and you go to work at him on the ground. Yeah, we ran a fullback a couple times at him, and here Bernie uh, Leggett picks up about nine yards, and then we come back, and... Elvis had a fine Van Dyne a few times today, and he does a good job of it here. Elvis, 20 of 22 on the day. Not a bad day. No, it's a great day. He was He's a very accurate passer and uh, very proud of what he did. And then we bogged down there and came up short on a fourth and three, and this is a good field goal here. This is the same angle we missed the one at Boston College, and it's something that we needed. Here's a great play by Hutchinson, running over their fullback, and then Sack and Meyer, and that was a big play. And as I told you, you know, we really missed him last year, Jim. Defense played much better than they did against Boston College. Much better, yeah. They were good against run. And uh, we've had two consecutive games without 100 yards. Here's uh, Elvis hitting Walter Smith, who's a teammate of Jerome Bettis, uh, Notre Dame's fullback. Ricky Powers was outstanding. Too. Ricky was the workhorse. 30-some uh, carries for 170 yards, and he was he was really something. Here he hands off to Desmond, though, and Desmond's kind of special, Jim. He's uh, kind of special. You know, he's he, you got to say he's getting to the point where you might call him a great football player. I think maybe that's an understatement, kind of special. Because well, on Saturday <laughs> against Notre Dame, he was special. Yeah, he was special. He's he's done a great job, and needless to say, we're very proud. They come back here on a fake pass, then they hit Brown, their big tight end. Eric Anderson makes a great play here, and the reason being, Eric's going to come back in two plays and recover a fumble, which nullifies that long pass, and right here it is. Eric dives on the ball, and we get it on a miscue, but then Brooks fumbling the football. And I think one of the keys was also, you came back after that turnover and went right back after him. You never let up on him in the first half. Right. We wanted to try to possess the ball. We ended up doing that very well and mix in the run and the pass. And here's Ricky again making a couple shallow cuts and, and doing a good job, and he's a great runner. Didn't go deep too much, but you got a lot of underneath passes that were big passes on third down. Right. We, we converted to third downs a, a great number, a large number of times. And the other thing, Jim, is they played us deep, so we couldn't throw the balls deep. Here we had Bernie Leggett in the flat on a big play set up our next touchdown. And you talk about the workhorse. Boy, Ricky Powers was yeah. something. Yeah, here's a great play. And here's where this is the play we also lost Steve Everett on, our excellent safety, but, or excuse me, center. Uh, Ricky goes 16 yards there for a big touchdown. Now, 17 and nothing. Here's the worst play I think our defense had all day, allowing them to come out 20 yards on a draw to give them field position where they would gamble with their passes. And that was really... Uh, a tough play. Here, Meyer rolls out, does a good job hitting the guy in the flat. If you give him time, which he's going to get on a couple occasions, he's going to hit the big one on you. He yeah. is a good quarterback, but we contain him pretty well. Here they call it what you call a flank or screen, and a lot of people are running that down, and we don't tackle well there, and he gets down to the three, and then we stop him on the first play, and they throw a fullback delay here for a touchdown. That drive really hurt, because if we could have gone that locker room 17
uh, to nothing rather than a 17-7, obviously would have a lot of confidence. Did you sense a momentum shift when they got into the end zone late? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it may be a good thing because it got our attention a little bit. But, you know, if we wouldn't have had a draw play right before half to give them f the field position and try those things. I think we'd have been in great shape. But, you know, it's one of those big games. It's <laughs> never easy. It's always back and forth, and it's always a 15-rounder. It always seems that way against Notre Dame, and that was no different this year. Come back. We'll take a look at the second half. But first, let's visit a very happy Michigan locker room. Well, we wanted to run the ball against him, and if we knew we were going to, uh, we'd have to block the down man first. And we got some movement on him, and uh, came off on the linebackers, and things worked out for us. Framed hangings and mats. To order, call 1-800-323-2536. Jim. Uh, Notre Dame, you know, last chance to get a win against them, and uh, I just had, the whole team had to give it his all, especially the fifth-year seniors, you know. We just went out there and played our hardest, you know. There's no question it was an awful big game for the Wolverines, and at 17-7, coming out for the third quarter, you get the football to start things off, and uh, I always said the first possession of the second half is very, very, very important anyway, and you didn't really do what you wanted to do. No, we moved the ball a little bit, Jim, but we wanted to put points on the board, and it was important, and I told him at halftime, we've got to put points on the board, and if we don't, defense, you've got to come out and stop them. And they get it after you don't go anywhere with it, and they come right down. You've got to be going, wait a minute, exactly. this can't be happening right. again. Meyer gets too much time to throw here and hits a big one after a penalty. That was on a third and 15. We give him a 34-yard completion, which we shouldn't do. We jump off sides on a fourth down here when they're going for it on fourth and two. Chance to stop them. And then another big third down play. This one goes third to distance. Seven. This had to kill you. See, we're man-to-man -man coverage here. Meyer just has too much time to throw. You've got to contain the guy. And we put our uh, people in uh, too long cover time really that makes it 17 14 you get the ball back and you start to make some things happen and answer them right here ricky makes a nice seven yard gain and he's coming back with a an eight yard gain here he, he made some good cuts now there's some holes in there but he, ricky will carry people that's his strength then on uh, third and six uh desmond really gets hit here I didn't think it was a great spot, but we got the first down anyways. But Elvis is getting good underneath. Then on fourth down, this is one of the reasons why I got a little upset late in the game when we threw on fourth and one, because they were playing us so heavy and trying to take all the things away. And we thought if we could get the ball to Desmond, it would help. But they get the ball back, and this may be the biggest defensive series of the game. Key series, because there are three plays and out, and we get the ball right back. And in the fourth quarter, I think they only had to play three minutes. Here, Ricky makes a nice jump in there and a great move and, and uh, runs inside for 11. Then we go back, and <clears throat> Elvis hits Van Dyne here. That was a great catch there, Jim. And then on first and 10, they're loaded up to stop the run. You go back to the air. Right. This is uh, Yale again on an out cut, stretching for yardage. And he had really a good game. Uh, did, he did an excellent job. And then here on fourth and one, uh, Elvis pumps Desmond, and Desmond goes up in the corner and lays out and makes a nice catch. The ca question is, who made the call, Elvis or you? Well, I give him the option to make that <laughs> call, believe me. But uh, they executed it, <clears throat> and they better have there, or they should have went to the South Bend bench if they hadn't. Did you think that... Desmond was going to have a chance to make this catch. Well, from where I stood, I, I couldn't really see. I knew the ball went up, and Elvis did a good job because he laid it up for him. And then by laying it up, gives Desmond a chance to run underneath it. And they were trying to bump and run us there, and then they came off of it late back in the zone. Here on a couple third downs late in the game, we're this just is, kind of controlling the ball. Yeah, you put them away with this. Just yeah. like Illinois last year. Here's a third and nine. Yeah, it's funny as you mention that, Jim, because that's what the players start saying. Illinois, remember Illinois, remember Illinois. And they were so proud of that possession time, which we failed to do, if you remember, in the Iowa game, which gave them a touchdown. Forty minutes Michigan held the football. Maybe one of the best of our controlling the ball, best jobs we've ever done. And it helped, you know, you keep a great offensive team off the field, it's hard for them to score points. You got to realize they only had the ball 20 minutes and scored uh, 14 points. 
the catch by Desmond in the end zone. We were talking after the game, and you said, you know, we're playing on natural grass. If we're playing on artificial surface, maybe he doesn't make that catch. And you gave us a couple of interesting reasons why. Would you go into that? Well, I think, number one, he has to... You learn to lay out better on grass because in practice it's easier to dive for balls. It, it's, it's a more comfortable feeling. Because you're practicing on grass. Right. right. And, and you're on grass, so you'll dive and it's easier. When you do that on the turf, you'll get some arm burns and things. So and I think saying, it's a little softer, too. Right. When you catch the ball, it isn't as easy. So in pop practice, out. if you were on turf, kids wouldn't dive and lay out. Right. Our kids will get on the ground more. It sounds funny, but because of the grass, you eliminate the floor burns, which you eliminate. They'll dive, they'll roll better, and it just becomes a habit. And when you practice on turf, you don't do that all And the time. turf's harder, and the way he made that catch very well could have popped out of there, too. Some people say it's great coaching, Jim. I don't know that if you would classify it in that area, but a lot of people say it's good, just good now, coaching. Now, would those great people, the people that say it's great coaching, be like your wife and your <laughs> mom, mom and your dad? I think that's exactly yeah, okay. Desmond Howard, needless to say, and, and uh, I always worry about patting people on the back is getting in the position where he's one of the best football players in this country. Now, I don't want to bring this up, but they're going to bring it up to you, okay? People are talking Heisman. Well, I, I think they're going to talk about a lot of players, but it's like talking about number one. I mean, who's number one? You'll know at the end of the season. It's the guy who does it or the team who does it over the long haul. I don't want to get carried away in pushing one individual, but I'm also not going to take credit away from an individual who's playing extremely well. But we want to stay as a team at Michigan. You beat Notre Dame. Where is this team at this point? I mean, great emotional victory for them. Where do you think they are, where you want them to be? after you took them since August? Well, I guess they were right on track because we're 2-0. and <laughs> There's some things I'd like to be doing better, but uh, being 2-0 and is the idea. Again, I want to go to the Rose Bowl. I can't emphasize that enough. And we got a great Florida State team coming up. We're going to take a little time off, though, this week because, you know, we got the open date. And I told them I'd see them on Tuesday, and they went wild when I told them that. <laughs> but uh, they deserve it, and we'll get some bumps and bruises healed up. That's the important thing. Get ready because you got two weeks and you got Florida State, and they're never going to be easy. But before we get to Florida State, we've got to get to a brand new building. It's actually not brand new, it's a year old, but they dedicated it this year, and it happens to have the name Schembechler Hall. Don't go away. We'll show you the dedication before we hear some, from some more from the locker room. With the offensive line that we have, we knew we could have controlled the ball, and that's what we did. That was one of our major goals for the team, and it uh, worked out great for us. What happened to Derek, I hated to see it. You know, I wouldn't want it to happen, but, you know, at Michigan, they expect you to come up and play like the guy in front of you, and hopefully I did that today. The construction of the new Schembechler Hall Center of Champions from the design stages to construction to the finished product. Well, this past May, the new facility was dedicated with a guest list of luminaries that was certainly fitting for a building bearing Bo Schembechler's name and characterizing a home for champions. The festivities marked the official naming of the new facility, Schembechler Hall, and two very well-respected Michigan men led the list of speakers who wholeheartedly approved of the building's official name. Our coaches at Michigan, we've always regarded as first and foremost as teachers. Mo and Steve and Red and Bill, and of course, none better than Bo Schembechler, who for so long has epitomized the best in the Michigan tradition of excellence, that special spirit of going all out, of doing the best you can and doing it the right way, the Michigan way. In my judgment, it's highly appropriate that this new facility, the Center of Champions, be designated the name of Bo Schembechler. Bo, as all of you know, epitomizes and represents the very finest, not only in coaching, but in character. Although Bo was adamant that the facility not bear his name, the Regents didn't listen and did it anyway. But there was no doubt that in Bo's mind, Michigan needed this center of champions. And why shouldn't we have the finest facility in the country for our football team? If it helps us get players for the future, fine. But the truth of the matter is, every guy who's ever worn the maize and blue, who can still walk, should go through that building and realize that that building is a part of him. 
I appreciate more than you know my name on that building. But to me, it will always be the center of champions, the center of champions for all of those who have played and coached Michigan football. Bo's remarks were vintage Schembechler, but entering his second year as the ex-Michigan coach, he told those gathered that he also missed his former job. I stayed away for a year, but I'm going to come around a little more because I missed it so much. But I don't want any of you to worry. Gary doesn't listen to me. He still wants to throw the damn ball all over the place. And Gary Muller continues to throw the damn ball uh, all over the place. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Winning a football game against Notre Dame with a fourth and inches pass that I don't think Schembechler would have called. Well, I don't know if he would or not, Jim. Come uh, on, Mo. He probably would have ran the ball, <laughs> got a first down, and would have to give them the ball later in the game and would have scored a touchdown. But uh, I became a little frustrated because what happened to us earlier, we get stopped in that situation. And our kids did a good job executing the play. And the other thing is, when you got a weapon like Desmond Howard, who you got to look at him a little bit like you do Anthony Carter. you got to try to find ways to use him. And on short yardages, sometimes when they're going to uh, single him up, and you got to take advantage of it. And even though Bo calls you up on occasion, you still kind of have that thing, i got to run the ball. i got to be like the old man sometimes, don't you? Well, but no, I want to control the ball. Now, you look at those stats, and you get Ricky Powers the ball 30-some times. That's important. You've got to be able to control the ball. And if you can't run the ball at Michigan, you aren't going to get those plays to Desmond. And I was very happy on the way we controlled the ball on the ground, got the good control passing game going. And uh, it was one of those games that is very much a Bo Schembechler image on it. There's no question about that. And the Bo Schembechler name is permanently stamped in the University of Michigan thanks to naming its Schembechler Hall, where Gary Muller and the University of Michigan football team now call home. Don't go away. We'll be back, wrap things up for this week. No scouting report because there's a week off. But we'll talk about that when we return. Team on Tuesday. Yeah!